Hello and good evening. Magnus Holberg is back again. Tonight I'm gonna start a series of videos how to select a pump. First one we'll be looking at what do we need to know about the pipe system when we want to design and to get the correct pump for our system. The pictures here I will explain and you will understand more when we get to the end of this video. First we have a look at the complete system and the parts that makes up the resistance in the system. But also we'll have a look at the lifting height on this slide. Now the system's resistance is basically what the pump needs to overcome. And that resistance is made up of the static lifting height, the flow and the friction losses depending on the flow. So on the right hand side you see a schematic of the system which we'll come back to in this video several times. But now let's look at the H stat or the lifting height. The static lifting height is basically the level from where you're pumping and the distance up to where you want to pump the water. So that's the static lifting height. Friction losses in the system dependent on the flow or the H dynamic. I've shown you a picture of a pump, also the picture of a fountain maybe where that you want or we want to pump the water to. So what do we need between those two points to pump the water? Well, first of all, we need a piping system. I've illustrated the piping system with white pipes and orange pipes. The white pipes having a larger diameter than the orange pipe, symbolizing that larger diameter pipe will have less friction losses compared to a smaller pipe at a certain set flow. So looking at the piping, we also have to add the length of the pipes or the individual pipes and the whole length of the piping systems. So length of pipe, pipe diameter at a certain flow will give you a resistance or a pressure that the pump needs to overcome when we want to get the water to the fountain and to the lion head to get it out. Now that's the first point. Second point is that a piping system is very or almost never a straight pipe. It will bend, it will go in, in turns and, and stuff like that. And on each bend, you will have a friction loss, be it 90 degrees, as you see here, or be it 60 or 30 or 45 degrees. You will have different type of friction losses and resistance at a certain flow. Also, at the pump outlet into the pipe system, you will have a, a, a pressure resistance or, or, or something the pump also needs to overcome. So length of piping system, how it is laid, how it bends and stuff like that will add up to a resistance that the pump needs to overcome at a certain flow. But there is more. You have valves, you have flow meters, you can even have static mixers where you want to mix in a chemical mounted inside or on the pipe that will make pressure losses when the water goes through them. When you have looked at the whole system, the piping, the diameters, the pipe length, how it will turn and go to the point where you want to water, what type of valves are installed, flow meters, etc., etc., then you can calculate the pressure losses in the whole piping system. And that pressure, I've illustrated here by a manual uh, pressure gauge, is the pressure that the pump needs to pump at that flow, which I've illustrated here with a picture of a flow meter, the flow that you want to get when you get to the lion. In order to show you in reality how a piping network can look, I will use some pictures from a project that Karlskrona Kommun did several years ago. And it's also an example I use in some of my classes, both for piping network, but also for how to solve a situation with a brownification or a more high colored in your raw water supply. But enough about that. Let's look at the system. The system 
one point you have here and then the water is pumped through piping all the way down to Karlskrona waterworks. And on the pictures here you can see from the uh, Vong where the water is pumped to Karlskrona you see the piping network and from these pictures you can understand it goes over fields, the pipe goes through woods, uh, close to roads and you have to go under roads maybe. You need valves, you need other things on the pipes that will affect the resistance or pressure drop in the piping system. So how the pipes are laid down and what is connected to the pipes are very important to know when you calculate the pressure drop in that system in order to find out what pump you need for getting the flow you want, in this case from Vong down to Karlskrona. To summarize, we have the system. In that system you need to find out what is the static lifting height between the point you will pumping from and up to the point you want to go. Also, you need to select the flow that you want to pump Two, in this case I had a lion head, but the flow is what you select and what you want the pump to transport to where you want it. That will give you a possibility to calculate the friction losses at that flow in the pipe. So static lifting height, H static, friction losses in the pipe combined with the flow, you have the dynamic pressure losses. And also I have just made a note that 10 meter water column equals one bar. So the static resistance of pressure plus the dynamic pressure at the chosen flow will give you the total pressure that you need to find a pump that can work at in order to give you the flow that you want. And as always, I will finish this video as I've done with every other video with some pictures from my island Gotland here. Uh, actually, the one to the right I took with 135 millimeter uh, two days ago. Beautiful sunset. And the other one, well, it's a house with an interesting mirror. With that, I will say thank you very much. And remember, water really rocks. Take good care and bye bye.